Hi students. In this video we're going to go over a SOLIDWORKS simulation of a cantilevered beam. Hopefully you've watched the first video where we went over the basic process. So if any of this seems a little too quick and you'd like a more basic introduction, feel free to watch the part one. So let's begin. We're going to start off by clicking on our simulation tab. We're going to do a new study. It's going to be static. We'll say OK. We're going to apply the material to our beam. So we'll apply our material. As always, I'm going to use my favorite alloy, 6061T6, probably the most common aluminum available. Okay, we have our materials. We are not going to do connections because we don't have an assembly. We are going to have fixture the model because we have to constrain it in space before we apply our loads and get deformations. So I'm right clicking on fixtures. I'm going to do fix geometry. And I'm going to fix that face in space. Next, I'm going to put an external load on it. I'm going to apply a force right on this edge. I don't like the direction though. So what I'm going to do is click on Selected Direction. I'm going to use this box to state the direction I want to go in by picking on that edge to define a vector. Still don't like it. I'd rather the arrows go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to click on Reverse Direction. That looks nicer. And I'm going to set the force at 20 pounds. There we go. We have a downward force of 20 pounds. The beam I've drawn, this is one inch wide, half an inch thick, and six inches long. So we'll be able to compare the results we get from our mesh in finite element analysis to an analytical solution. Okay, so let's mesh our model. We'll create our mesh. That looks pretty good for our simple model. We'll run the study. Lots of pretty colors pop up. But the question we must always ask ourselves is, do they make sense? Well, the first thing I'm looking at that I'm really not liking is I see the red at about 2,775 PSI. That magnitude is correct. But it's saying the top and bottom are both in tension. Well, that's not right. And this deflection is also huge. Now, I don't think putting 20 pounds on a half inch thick piece of aluminum is going to make it deflect that far. So let's take a look at what went wrong. First thing we're going to do, von Mises stress by definition is always positive. So if you're looking for a result that's going to give you both a tensile and compressive result, you don't want von Mises. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to edit definition. And instead, I'm going to look at the stress in the Z direction. So Z normal stress, PSI, that's okay. And down here under deform shape, we have automatic. So it has exaggerated the deformation by a factor of 43. Well, that's a little bit high. Let's go true scale and look at the actual deformation. I'll say OK. Interesting. Okay, so a lot of our deformation went away, and we see red tensile stress right up at the top. That looks good. Now we've got blue compressive stress on the bottom. 
So that's looking a whole lot better. Let's start probing and examine the model and see what it actually gave. I'm going to right click, I'm going to hit probe. Let's zoom in. So I see 3,469. Hmm. Okay. Let's look at some other points. 3,100. Twenty-seven nineteen. So now the question we should ask is, does this agree with hand calcs? Are these remotely in the ballpark of what they should be? Now before doing this, I actually did the math, and here it is in Excel. So for a beam length of six inches, a height of half an inch, one inch wide and 20 pounds. I've put 120 inch pounds of moment on it. Here's my area moment of inertia. So the stress at the root should be about 2,880 PSI. Well, that's a little bit high. That's a little bit high. A lot of these numbers are running high. So rather than immediately saying, oh, SolidWorks is wrong, we need to look at our constraints and how we're holding this object. Okay. One of the problems we have is the same one from the previous problem. We're not allowing this material to move. So let's look at some of our displacements and see if they'll give us a better answer as to what's going on. So there's our total displacement. Let's look at our displacements in the X direction. Well, those are some funny looking displacements. So because the bottom of the beam should be compressive and bulging outward, and the top is in tension and should be pulling inward, let's modify our our uh, end constraint to allow those movements to occur. So let's start off by changing this fixed fixturing. So instead of making it fixed, I'm going to make it a roller slider. And you can see from the animation what I'm implying should be able to happen. This is going to put the back of the beam on a supporting wall, but make it able to orbit around. Okay, so we'll say that's fine, but now we need to stop it from moving. So we're going to add another fixture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this vertex and this vertex. And we'll use reference geometry, in this case the edge, to say stop all movement in the vertical direction. So it's going to allow a translation of zero. So now it's on the wall, but it cannot move downward. And the only degree of freedom we still have left is the ability to move side to side. So let's fix that. So we're going to do another reference geometry. Okay. I'm going to click 
click on that edge. We'll do advanced. Whoops. Wrong selection box. And we'll say there's a translation of zero. Okay, notice the data did not update, so we have to rerun our simulation. Ah, that looks a whole lot better. So now we were looking for a stress of 2,880. Our maximum top root stress is at 2,917. That is a whole lot more in agreement. Okay, so let's look around and test using probing. Two thousand nine hundred and seven, two thousand eight hundred and forty seven. Okay, these are some good looking answers. Two thousand eight hundred and twenty four. And then let's check on the bottom. Nice and symmetrical, 2,827, 2,811. So right in the ballpark of where they should be. Okay, not bad. So now we may want to ask the question, how far down did the tip of our beam deflect? Well, let's look at the displacement. We'll show the displacement. And I want to look at Y displacement. And it looks like at the very tip of our beam, the beam moved down about 14 thousandths of an inch which is quite reasonable. Okay, so I hope you got the the main drive of this video, which is the constraints are absolutely critical to getting good results. Poor constraints can lead to absolutely trash results that lead to stresses that are way too high or too low. So be very, very careful about over-constraining your models. On that note, thank you for watching.